Okay, so this is uh, from the DPL qualifier, and uh, certainly Mez is one of the uh, better players in the game, uh, without question. And, um, you know, it's always a pleasure to play against him, uh, just because you know it's going to be a good game. You know, uh, fantastic start for him. Uh, just right from the get-go, a 3-3, and refilling your hand is very strong, obviously. So I led with the Hailstone Golem. Um, hoping I could just kind of like out bulk him. Um, Hellstone Golem, not a super popular card anymore, but uh, I still find it useful in the current meta game. Although I would have preferred something like Spelljammer myself, but a little less hesitant to play uh, um, through things with uh, with the Spelljammer on the table because I know um, he's going to have to deal with that four six, and I'm going to get my cards back. Anyways, um, I did make the option here, or the decision here, to kill the Spelljammer without taking damage, just because, uh, sorry, Magmar tends to have a lot of burst damage, so I just wanted to kind of avoid that myself. Um, so, opted to Holy Immolation and then swing. Um, we'll kind of get to what I was talking about a second ago here in just a little bit. I have uh, um, kind of made a tough decision here. Um, but I want to I want to kind of explain it because I it, it turned out exactly like I thought it was going to and it always feels good whenever you make a play and you're like ah that's perfect perfection so uh, again I'm still taking the, p the path of least damage is really what we're going here for just take as little damage as I humanly can um, so and we do have a bit of a health advantage so bash I also had the option to not play the Tempest and instead hit the uh, the 4-3 and then swing with Tiger. Um, I would have taken uh, the same amount of damage and used less cards, uh, but he would have taken two less damage in that order. But I would have I would have used one less card, so that's a possibility. Um, and then because I because I kind of contested this orb earlier instead of staying in front of him, I now have access access to a seven mana play, which is delightful because we're gonna send this away. And and basically my thought process is like, okay, that's that's basically going to set us up so this thing doesn't matter throughout the entire game. So, I'm holding on to the Holy Emulation instead of replacing it, just because I'm, I'm like, oh, well, you know, eventually I'll get a creature and it'll it'll be what I'm looking for, so. Out comes a natural selection. That's two of them. Um, and here's where things kind of get interesting. So, I'm going to slow down. Okay, now, here's the decision I made. I... And I struggled over this for a little while. I decided to disenchant him, play the uh, play the Arclight Regalia, right? And move down and swing instead of cycling to look for something else. And I'm, I'm assuming that I can put a ton of pressure on him. And I didn't want to inst like I had the option to go dig for a creature and then play that and then pump it up instead. Um, and possibly Holy Immolation if I really wanted to try to get in there. Um, but I, I made this decision because I'm assuming that he's going to be on... Uh, Mechantor Warbeast next turn. Like, that that's where I think he's at right now. And so I'm just kind of testing this theory of like, okay, if I make this play, if he plays Mechantor and then Mechantor's me and bashes, he still doesn't clear the, Ar Ar the Arclight Regalia and he didn't get any extra cards out of hand. So that's what I was looking at right here. And so, as you can see, go ahead and dome him. Like, still holding the Holy Immolation, assuming I'm going to get a creature to play on it. And then pass the turn. So this is what I'm expecting him to do right now is to is to play anything else, not Macantor, and then send me, the, uh, you know, and then probably not bash me. I don't think he will at 15 health and with the damage I've done. And so that was it. That was kind of what I was thinking. And now he's shown me right here. Okay, he literally had nothing else in his hand. Like this is this is what he's playing on is Macantor plus a bunch of answer answer cards. And so now I'm thinking, okay, if, if he's on my Cantor plus a bunch of answer cards, how can I force his hand, right? If I could force him to play Macantor, I could feasibly kill him next turn. If you think about it, like, let's, let's count it up. So I got four here, right? That's four off of me. Potentially two off of myself, assuming he breaks the, um, assuming he breaks the Arclight Regalia, right? So that would be Macantor plus himself again. That, so that would be eight damage, right? Then uh, four more off of Holy Immolation is 12. 
So I, I've got to come up with three damage somewhere, and I've, I've got two more if I can find a rush minion or something to that nature. And so I need to find at most one more damage, or excuse me, at most three more damage and possibly as little as, as uh, one more if I can find something else. And so now I'm thinking is how do I make him play Mechanter or Warbeast? And so what I do is instead of playing the Sunstill Defender off and up here so that it's away from this Sunstill Defender, I'm going to play it directly down here right next to his general so that his Sunstill Defender can move up to hit it, and that should motivate him to play the Mechanter or Warbeast to clear my Sunstill Defender plus uh, to get some damage on my Arclight Regalia, right? And so what I'm expecting him to have is I'm expecting him to have Sunstill Defender here, and the Mechantor Warbeast either here or here. One of those two positions, right? Either way, doesn't really matter. That puts me here. You see what I'm saying? And so now, he's either going to move two away from me, like that, or he's going to move two away from me this way. Either way, basically functionally the same thing, right? He's probably not going to move up towards me, or maybe he'll bash me, but I doubt it. Either way, that's a forced move, and so now I can start planning that out. All I have to do is find a creature to play this Holy Immolation on, and then I'm going to be able to get into his face again. And so that's what I'm thinking is like, okay, if I play the Sunstill Defender here, it's going to look like a mistake because he can move up here, bash, and then play the Mechantor and swing. And so that's what we do here. Sorry. And it may take a little bit now because I just explained everything I was thinking. <laughs> Whereas when I was in the tournament, it didn't take so long, so. So there you go. There's my bait, which is basically saying, come find your, uh, you know, come come bring your Sunstill Defender up here. That's a, a marginal play that I just made where I pumped him with the roar. Uh, I knew the roar was coming up anyways. So, all right, so now here we are. If I, I mean, I found the Tiger. So if he plays Mechantor like I had tried to set him up to do, he will lose the game. 100%. So th there it is. The bait set, hooked. Now, this was unexpected. I didn't, I didn't foresee the uh, Flash Incarnation. There it is. And now I'm just hoping that that Flash Incarnation doesn't do anything new too, too terrible. Uh, he was able to clear my, own, my Arclight Regalia with his Tiger um, instead of having to take four to the face. And so now, instead of being in this perfect position, uh, we're going to be able to just kill him for Xaxes instead of having two over. So, But the whole thing went through basically like I had anticipated it would, and uh, that felt pretty good. Like, that was a uh, really good foresight that I was uh, fairly proud of. Like, go me, was how I kind of felt there. So, and we'll kind of go ahead and play this out through. And there you go, Xaxes. So, feels pretty good, man, whenever, uh, whenever things go exactly your way. So, just wanted to get that one on, on stream.